the European models that we have seen so far, that we have seen so far, I need to give you some background. Uh, so to begin with, Islamic religious education in France is only available in Muslim schools. Indeed, there is no denominational religious education in public schools since the end of the 19th century in France when it was replaced by moral and civic education. Secondly, the supply of private Muslim education is entangled in tensions that you need to be aware of so that you can better understand uh, the diversity of Islamic religious education offered in France. So this presentation will heavily rely on my doctoral work carried out between 2016 and 2021 during which I interviewed the teachers and head teachers of a dozen Muslim elementary schools. I also conducted observations in three of them in both secular and religious subjects. Although Muslim schools have existed in France since 2001, it was not until the mid 2010s that the movement really took off. From 30 schools in 2014 to almost 70 today. Since the 1990s, we have witnessed the creation of a so-called Muslim problem by the French elites. Readings in terms of communitarism and now separatism became more and more important in the public opinion. The 2015 attacks on Charlie Hebdo and the Bataclan marked an important turning point in the public policies against radicalization targeting, uh, in particular, Muslim schools. So in my thesis work, it quickly became clear to me that schools, in reaction to this context, uh, are trying to put in place strategies to limit the effects of stigmatization. Faced with accusations or suspicions, schools find themselves caught in a tension. Indeed, what is the raison d'être of a Muslim school if it does not offer a religious specificity? At the same time, how can Muslim schools propose a specificity that won't be perceived as communitarist or as separatist? Two concepts that obviously uh, need to be deconstructed. So the two poles of this tension can be identified as follows. On the one hand, respectability, on the other, distinction. I understand respectability as the des desire to assert oneself as an ordinary school, like any other type of school, on the model of public schools and private Catholic uh, schools that are publicly funded. The distinction, on the other hand, corresponds to the affirmation of a specificity, whether pedagogical or den denominational, mm that translates in particular in the offer of religious classes. So this tension between respectability and distinction plays out at three levels. Firstly, um, yeah. Firstly, within school, in the teachings that are offered both in secular and religious subjects, raising very concrete questions, for instance, is it possible to have students learn the Quran by heart in a French school? Secondly, this tension plays out between schools, between Muslim schools, in a logic of differentiation in a competitive school market. That explains in part uh, why there is a variety of uh, Islamic religious education offers, as I will uh, show you in a second. Finally, these tensions run through the relations that Muslim schools have with the authorities, notably through the question of the request for subsidies that any <coughs> private school can make. And it is raising the questions, is it possible to receive public funding while offering a Muslim certificate? <coughs> So, in order to analyze the variety of Islamic religious education practices, I will rely on three criteria. Teaching volume, course content, and teaching methods. So, firstly, the volume. In my sample, it varies from no Islamic religious education to 15 minutes per day. Now, 
let me focus on the absence of Islamic religious education because it seems to me to be fairly indicative of the tension between respectability and distinction I just told you about, and more generally about the French context. So the one school where there was absolutely no Islamic religious education made that choice after having been caught in a wave of inspections from the Ministry of Education after the 2015 attacks on Charlie Hebdo. So this school embarked on a reform movement to focus on academic learning and decided to stop Islamic religious education classes. The school principal told me, we need our hours for general education, knowing that there are already five hours of Arabic language, so the choice was made this year to do Islamic religious education, let's say more of an attitude and behavior than actual teachings. However, this particular decision to abolish uh, Islamic religious education or in some schools to release it outside the school hours during the weekend, uh, for example, seems to me to be indicative of the intention of Muslim schools to be as close as possible to regular schools, that is to say secular state schools, and to wipe off any indication of their difference towards the national reference. The second <coughs> distinguishing uh, criteria between the Islamic religious education offers is the contents of the classes. Broadly speaking, I have identified two types of content. The first I called traditional content in the sense that it corresponds to the teachings as they are given in French mosques uh, since the 1980s. So in my sample, at least half of the Muslim schools have strong historical connections to their local mosque. And this may explain why the content of Islamic religious education classes in this first type is quite similar to what is offered in the local mosque Sunday school. Uh, so the curricula includes knowledge about dogma, religious practice, uh, the history of the prophets and the memorization of the Quran. The traditional approach is characterized by its fundamentalist interpretations as they work <coughs> around the non-negotiable beliefs of Muslim. Lastly, I noticed that in this type of content, the pupils were socialized to what Sabah Mahmoud calls virtuous fear. It refers to fear when it acts as a spur to virtuous action and as a permanent condition of the pious self. So for example, let's take the class of Masi. He is a fifth grade teacher at school B in my sample. And unlike his colleagues who feel that they are poorly trained and give very limited time and space to I, uh, Islamic religious education teachings, Massey particularly appreciates Friday mornings when he reserves an hour and a half for religious learning. The prospect of being able to mobilize the religious frame of reference with his pupils was a key motivation for his move from public to private education. In his Islamic religious education classes, Massey often uses an event that occurred in the classroom as a starting point to generalize about one of the religious themes in the curriculum. So in a session on the validity of the Shahada, Massey wanted his students to reflect on the theme of loving God and enjoying, I quote, serving him. So he challenged his pupils by, by telling them, I quote, last week one of you cried because she couldn't do her prayer on time. The teacher explained that this kind of behavior proves, I quote, where you are in your relationship with Allah. It has to hurt if you don't do your prayer on time. It should hurt. In his class, Massey uses terrifying images of hell and conjures them by evoking divine love and mercy. Like the female preachers of the mosque movement that Sabah Mahmoud studied, he seeks a balance between two styles of preaching, one fear-inducing and another reminder of God's love. The second type of content that I called acculturated content uh, 
Uh, I call it like that because the teachings aims to be part of a dynamic of acculturation by trying to adapt the Quranic uh, and prophetic message to the reality experienced by French children. The goal is to create links between French social norms and Islamic values. This approach involves highlighting themes presented as common, such as ecology, social justice, justice or carrying out uh, actions linked to uh, the French context, like collecting food for les restos du coeur, uh, a soup kitchen, uh, cleaning up the neighborhood, picking up trash, etc. In this approach, the use of the French language is generalized, including when using verses from the Quran. The teachers are also careful to use the word God, Dieu, instead of Allah. And it is not without causing some difficulties with uh, some of the pupils. A concrete example for the second approach is the publication of the first Muslim textbook uh, of the first textbook for Muslim school teachers in France. I met one of its authors as she was responsible for religious education in one of the school of my uh, sample. Entitled Islam, Fondement, Valeur et Pratique, the first volume was published in 2018 and is intended for teachers and pupils of the first grade. It consists of 10 chapters covering topics such as the belief uh, in God, the life of the Muslim scientist Al-Biruni, uh, hygiene and health. The book reflects the acculturation efforts as it resembles in form and in context uh, in, and in contents the textbooks of the major French publishers that are used in regular subjects in uh, public schools. The French language is used almost exclusively. Uh, and as you can see, the rich illustration depicts French, uh, typical French settings such as green landscapes, Haussmannian architecture, Parisian monuments. It makes reference to French culture. So you have the Eiffel Tower or paintings by Monet. And you can also see the illustrated characters are white with blonde, red or brown hair and green or blue eyes. We can come back to that later. In terms of the activities proposed in the book, the author was inspired by the manuals uh, used in the French education system. She has thus chosen to offer an object that is familiar uh, in its structure to French school children. The same logic led her to make links with the French national education curriculum. For instance, the theme of citizenship is addressed in connection with the expectations of moral and civic education curriculums. So the best example for this effort is the chapter nine of the book called uh, I am a citizen of my country. The third and last distinguishing criteria between the Islamic religious uh, offers uh, is the choice of the pedagogical approach. In the first option, the teacher is considered, is conceived as a knowledgeable person <coughs> transmitting knowledge to ignorant pupils. So this can be seen in practices such as lectures, repetition uh, and memorization. The second approach that I observed, uh, progressive uh, pedagogy uh, based, uh, the teaching is conveyed through manual activities or uh, take a recreational form like uh, games or watching a video, etc. It is an attempt to comply with the expectations in terms of modernization and individualization that are found throughout the national education uh, French landscape. These new ways of transmitting religions challenge traditional approaches and are intended to be uh, more pedagogical. So I met Rania. Rania is in charge of religious education at School C. And she explained to me that her main aim is to put the child at the center of the teaching, 
So to achieve this, a large part of each lesson is devoted to manual activities such as drawing, gardening, caring for animals, cooking, etc. The themes of the curriculum are put into practice through numerous action and a project-based pedagogy. For example, a whole morning can be used to collect food uh, for a soup kitchen to introduce the students to the concept of sadaka and zakat. Another can be dedicated to the construction of a bird feeder on the basis of a hadith or uh, to making a pottery to evoke the creation of Adam. So in general, Rania's objective is, I quote her, to make students love Islam and its prophets. According to her, the surest way to foster a love of religion is for the pupils to have a good time. By engaging with these emotions, uh, Rania challenges rationalist approaches to religion. She believes that it is the wonder of the beauty and the perfection of the creation that should lead the pupils to the conclusion that God exists and is worthy of love. The emphasis on creativity and emotional uh, expression through the activities offered in the school fits well with the expressive orientations that favor the development and the personalized orientation of pupils. This way, the school is perceived as a space and a time for self-fulfillment, with particular emphasis on the well-being and the pleasure, the happiness of pupils, a concept that is particularly well-suited to middle classes. According to Rania, this objective of self-fulfillment is made more complex by the fact that her pupils spontaneously associate religious teachings with abrupt methods and uninformative teachings. By proposing playful activities, she, in contrary, seeks to position herself or the school with her against the traditional teachings as uh, they would have been delivered in mosques for a long time. She explains to me. In the mosque, the pupil sat still and swallowed, swallowed, swallowed information. Here, in the school C, the information is not so important. At the end, the amount of information given is a bit, I was going to say, like the expectations of the national education. We prefer the child to have a well-constructed mind rather than a well-filled one and not to know, not to give meaning to what has been given to him. So in this quote, Rania differentiates the Quranic school and the public school system on two levels from the pedagogical point of view and in terms of the aims of education. According to her, the pupil in the mosque is passive. He receives, he swallows uh, the information transmitted by the teacher, sometimes without uh, even understanding it. On the other hand, the student in the national education system is perceived by her as active, as he or she makes sense of the information transmitted by the teacher. By adopting a pupil-centered uh, pedagogy, Rania wants to put uh, position, wants to position her school in the continuity of the national education. Here we can see how the academic reason informs the conception of a good Islam, both in content and in form. I will finish this presentation with an attempt at a typology. So in order to present to you the three ideal types of Islamic religious education that I have identified, I drew a matrix based on the indicator, so the content and the pedagogy. And then I entered the data that I observed and it led me to identify three types. So first, the traditional type in the upper left corner as you can see, very classic content and form uh, resembling what is already available in mosques. The contemporary type uh, on the lower right corner is an attempt to offer Islamic religious education in the continuity of the pedagogical and didactic norms of the national education. The practice observed differ from the first type both in form, because they are thought to be pedagogically beneficial, 
and in substance, uh, with reference to the, the, the national education curricula. In this second formula, religious knowledge is good if, if it can be associated with pedagogical virtues similar to those words in general subjects. More surprising to me was the third type that I called hybrid type. It relies both on traditional content, but that are transmitted through the tools of progressive education, such as the Montessori method. So one quick example is the use in one of the uh, classes of my study of nomenclature cards by Alia. She's a, a teacher of the first grade in school B. So nomenclature cards are a tool from the Montessori method. And here you can see the pupil has to assemble three parts of the card, the definition, the image and the concept. Um, so here you can see very traditional content. It's the definition of uh, fasting uh, defined as the fourth pillar of Islam. Um, but the method is quite innovative and child centric. Plus, by implementing uh, the Montessori pedagogy, the school B can also hope to attract parents belonging to the economic fractions of the middle and upper classes who are particularly sensitive to this type of method. So in conclusion, from the point of view of the previously identified tension, it can be said that the schools that opt for the traditional Islamic religious education are more on the side of distinction. They want to be a true alternative to public education. They offer religious education in a significant volume based on the model of the mosque. Whereas the school that, that opts for the contemporary uh, Islamic religious education are more concerned with the search for respectability by trying to come as close as possible to the norms of national education, thus aiming for public funding. However, in conclusion, I have to say that the respectability strategy is currently a losing strategy on two levels. Firstly, it is important to note that in a period of budgetary austerity and political caution on the subject of Islam and especially Muslim schools, very little funding uh, has been allocated to Muslim schools in the last five years. Moreover, it's also a losing strategy because parents seem to be less interested in this type of offer if we look at the lower attendance rates of pupils. Thank you for your attention.